Hello and welcome to another Moog demo library. In today's video, we're going to be exploring Labyrinth, and in particular, we're going to look at some of the ways that we can alter Labyrinth's behavior using an external clock and modulation source. For this example, I'm going to be using Pamela's new workout, but you can use anything that generates clocks and modulation signals to get something similar to happen. So the first thing that I want to do is actually clock the two sequencers separately from each other so that they're moving independently. I have channels one and two on Pamela's new workout set up to play Euclidean trigger patterns, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to patch channel one into the clock one input and channel two into the clock two input. Now when I press the run stop button, we can see how the two sequencers are moving. You'll notice that sequencer one is clocked a little bit slower than sequencer two, so we're going to get a nice overlap where the two of them are shifting against each other as they play and continue to loop. The next thing that I want to do is actually automate the bit flipping so that I have patterns that are constantly changing over time. I could do that with the corrupt knob, but then that's a little bit less predictable and I actually want it to be a little bit more consistent in terms of turning on and off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use two quarter note trigger outputs from Pamela's workout and I'm going to feed them to the bit flip inputs on the patch panel. I'm going to patch output five into bit flip one and output six into bit flip two. So as you can hear, we start getting this interesting rhythmic pattern. And what's quite cool about this is because we're not clocking them at quarter notes, but we're feeding quarter notes into the bit flip, we're going to get this unique behavior of turning gates on and off as the two sequencers are playing. So the next thing that I want to do is actually separate the folder path and the filter path so that each one is controlled from a different envelope. So to do this, I'm going to begin by patching the sequencer 2 trig output to the EG2 trig input. And I'm going to make sure that the EG trig mix is set to sequencer 1 because that's going to make it so that the EG1 will get trigged by sequencer 1. Now what I want to do is take the EG2 output and I'm going to feed that into the cutoff input. And what that's going to do is replace the normalization of EG1 being the modulation source for this attenuverter modulating the filter. It is now replaced by EG2. And because on the panel you'll see that EG2 says it controls the VCA, now the filter is entirely controlled from EG2. The next thing that I want to do is patch the EG1 output to the wave folder's VCA CV input. So now I've separated these two paths so that EG1 is controlling the VCA and the folding in the folder path, and EG2 is controlling the filter and the filter's VCA in the filter path. So let's take a moment and listen to how that sounds. You'll notice I have the ring mod turned up in the mixer, so the ring mod is feeding both the folder and the filter at the moment. And we can take a second to listen to just the folder. And then we can listen to just the filter. You'll notice I have the filter mode set to band pass, and I have resonance all the way up so I can get this very acidic character out of the filter. So I'm going to set the blend back to the middle, and now the next thing that I want to do is actually automate the blending and the balance between the folder and the filter using a voltage. So I'm going to return to Pamela's workout, and if you look, I have channel 3 set up to be a stepped random modulation signal that's moving at 16th notes. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to patch that 3 output to the blend input on Labyrinth. So now what's happening is every 16th note of this pattern, I have the blend knob slightly moving around, and because this is a unipolar signal, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to focus more on the wave folder so that the signal is pushing it towards the filter. You can hear we wind up with these very interesting, almost alien-like drum sounds. You can also play with the relationship of the two oscillators to get a different character out of the ring mod. Yeah. <laughs> 
So from here, what I'd like to do is actually create a quarter note kick drum pattern to kind of pin down this rhythm that's happening. And I'm going to accomplish that by using this Topobrillo multi-filter. And I'm first going to patch a quarter note gate output from Pamela's into the ping input on the filter. And then I'm going to take a quarter note envelope output and feed that into the FM input on the filter. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn the resonance all the way up. So now you can hear I have a kick drum. I can play with the tuning by adjusting the frequency as well as the FM amount. So I can dial in something that I like. And now let's listen to how the labyrinth sounds as it meanders away against this quarter note kick drum. You'll notice that I have the sequencer one amount turned all the way up in the folder and sequencer two turned all the way up on the VCF cutoff. And I have my corrupt knobs turned up before noon so that they don't affect the gate pattern, but they do affect the voltage that I have coming out of the sequencer and they make it change over time. So the filter is getting modulated by sequencer two and the folder is getting modulated by sequencer one while they're both clocked independently from Pamela's workout and have bit flipping happening independently. I can add a little noise into this. So as you can hear, by integrating an external modulation and clocking source, I'm able to greatly modify the way that Labyrinth works and can explore some really otherworldly sounds.